We are live. Welcome back to another Wednesday live. Uh, today we are going to be doing some simple dot painting uh, using a variety of Ranger products. My name is Kelly Kronowski, Ranger Social Media Manager. I'm happy to have you here with me again this week. I'm so glad you are enjoying all these videos so much. I'm going to do the usual, flip the camera so you can see what I'm working on. This is kind of a, um, a test. Um, I just thought uh, I've been seeing this trend a lot and I wanted to see what I had on hand that I could kind of play around and recreate it and just kind of share my findings with all of you. So we're gonna be dabbling in a few different areas and projects today. As always, um, please share the video, comment below that you've shared it um, and you will be entered to win my prize giveaway. I also wanted to let you know that if you just touch my face right now and give it a little double tap, you should be able to select no notifications and what that will do is tell you whenever Ranger is live. So anybody um, who is live on Ranger page, um, it'll send you a notification. So if you wanna be notified when we're live, just go ahead and just click on my nose right now, um, give it a little double tap and um, a notification button should come up. I am going to flip the camera around, I'll get the comments rolling, and let's get started. Okay, let me get the comments up so I can see what you guys are up to today. Hello, everyone. Hello from sunny, hot New Mexico. Oh, it is actually warm here, so I wouldn't say hot, um, but it's like 60, I think, today. Um, I still just had my space heater on because <laughs> it was cold down here. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is some of the things that we're going to work on today. Um, just I wanted to share with you some techniques. We're going to, of course, make a card. As always, we always make a card. We're going to do a little rock painting. So we're just going to have fun. Um, everybody had a blast week last week with the mark making, and this is kind of continuing that theme, but this week we are focusing on dot art. And I don't know if you've seen, but dot, dot art is a huge trend, and Ranger has a lot of products that can help you achieve that really fun um, dot-tastic look. So <laughs> let's get going. I'm going to make my, clear my space, and my number one rule for working with dots is and dot art is move it aside and do not touch it because I was on the struggle bus with that. I kept forgetting that my stuff was wet and I kept touching it and uh just not good. <laughs> not good. Okay, so let me just move this stuff off. First, I'm just gonna go through some of the products that we do have and show you some ways to create dots just like on a, a scrap piece of paper, and then we're gonna get into the projects. Oh, thank you so much everyone for sharing. So how is everyone this Wednesday? I hope it is treating you well. Okay, where is my scrap paper? I just pulled it aside. All right. Oh, I, co I covered it with my station. There we go. All right, so I have just a piece of scrap paper here. And, oh, 80's next week. I, I wish it was 80 here right now. And, <clears throat> of course, Ranger has a variety of paints that um, work wonderfully for, for dot art. So I'm gonna just go through them really quickly. Um, we have the Dilutions paint here. I like these because they're a nice fluid paint um, and they are work very well for sticking tools in them, putting them out on your craft sheet and sticking different tools in to create really um, wonderful dots, uh, nice flat dots with the Dilutions paint. Um, we also have the Dina Wakely media paint and what I like about this is that it already has a fine tip on it so you can apply dots direct from the bottle here. These are a little bit more raised, a little bit more dimensional. Um, we also have some fine tip applicators um, that fit on top of these bottles. What you could do is pop this um, top off and put a fine tip applicator and you can get an even finer dot with these paints. So that is an option and I will show you those on our Stickles and Liquid Pearls bottles. Um, I don't have the one with me that fits the Dina paint, but we do sell it. It has a pink, um, a pink little ring around it. Um, but those fit on those bottles and you can get an even finer dot. Um, of course we have Distress Paint and this is similar to um, to the Dilutions paint in its fluidity. So um, you can certainly um, dip your tools into the Distress paint and make dots that way. 
Um, we also have our Stickles Glitter Glue. And as you can see here, we have uh, the fine tip applicator on these. So these are great for just dotting right from the bottle. Um, don't wanna, but you can just squeeze directly right onto your paper there. And hi, hello everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm so glad you're loving the lives. Thank you for tuning in everyone. This one here is the same as Stickles bottle, but here I've removed the plastic um, nib that comes with the bottle, the plastic fine tip here, and I've replaced it with our gray fine tip applicator. This fits all of our half ounce bottles. And you can see here that it has a needle here, um, and that just gives you a really, a lot more precise, um, a little a precise dot right there. So it also comes with a needle that sits inside of this tip to help it um, stay unclogged. So you just line that up and it screws back on. So these are really easy to replace and take off and I'll show you how I do those in just a minute. Um, same thing with our liquid pearls. These make wonderful dots. Um, again, you can do it right from the bottle or you can put the fine tip applicator on top. But again, um, you can just squeeze directly from the bottle. Um, if these ever get clogged on you, just stick a wire in there. Um, and it's always a good idea to give your bottles a little tap like this on a hard surface after you're done. So that way you can just get the product out of that nozzle. You've never seen the tips before. Yeah, the tips are have been around, but I feel like a lot of people don't know about them. And actually another coworker of mine is working on a really informative video about them. So stay tuned, I'll be sharing that once it's ready. But they have a lot of great uses. Um, so, and well, I'll do a comparison after. Um, the other product that I wanted to share with you, so we got stickles, we got liquid pearls, we have paints. Um, and then of course we have some tools. So we have our fine tip applicators. As you can see, they come in a package of 10. Um, so if you wanted to put them on a variety of colors or you can just switch your tips on and off. I, I do that a lot um, because sometimes I want the fine tip and sometimes I don't. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. Um, we also have the Wendy Vecchi um, Make Art Styluses. These come in a two pack and they have four different size um, ball tips on the top. And these are wonderful for dipping into paints and creating really beautiful dots every time. Um, she wanted these for her um, Colors of Perfect Pearls. Uh, they work great for Perfect Pearls, but they also work really well for stickles, paint. I really like them with the Dilutions paint and I will be using those today. And the other tool, now, of course, last week, I did some mark making with some found objects and I found that I really like to make dots with a eraser top. So I have my pencil eraser. You can certainly use that. And there are many ways and many different tools on the markets to make dot art. Um, I'm just showing you what Ranger already has available in the, their line because you may already have a lot of these products at home and that you can kind of do double duty with. So these are the tools that I had. Um, I just kind of played around and practiced and found things that I like, things that I don't like, surfaces I like, surfaces I don't like. So I'm just sharing with you the things that I had from the Ranger existing Ranger collection. So in case you do have them, you don't have to go out of your way to order specific tools. Um, the other thing that I found, because I saw a lot of people were using acrylic um, dowels to make dots with, um, so it got me to thinking. We have these um, detail blending tools. They're just little round dowels with little foams on the ends and they're for blending, ink blending. Um, into like really fine areas and I tried to dot with that but because this is so spongy it didn't give me a nice flat dot so actually what I did is on this end here I just ripped that foam right off and so I was using this end to dip into my paints and make some larger dots and then the great thing about it is that you can just wipe it off so you can just keep switching colors you can just have one tool dedicated to dot making and not you know waste your entire pack they come in a pack of five so you could just take one and dedicate that for a dot 
making tool if you'd like. So I found that um, I kind of really liked this for larger size dots. Um, what else did I want to share before I started? So that was basically it as far as the dotting tools and the dotting mediums. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys just how these do different perform differently and how the different tools work before I get going into a project. So I really love the, and I'm going to just scooch this down a little bit so you guys can see. Um, I love the fluidity of the Distress and the Dilutions paint for dipping tools into. Um, so obviously um, you can just get a little bit out on your craft sheet and you can see they're both pretty fluid products. Um, Distress paint definitely a little bit more fluid than the Dilutions. Um, but you can go in here with your stylus and you're just gonna wanna dip and dot. And you can get some pretty great dots with um, the stylus. And of course, I find that you wanna dip in between each dot because you really want that paint to be loaded on your tool. Um, if you don't dip in between, then your dots can start to vary in size. As you could see, I didn't, I didn't continually um, dip and you could see how my dots gradually got smaller. So, um, are the spongy tips replaceable or do you just wash them when you are done? So, um, you can wash our foams out on a regular blending tool like this. Um, these easily rinse out. Um, these, you could, but they're very small that I don't know how you would really get it clean. What I would do is, since they come in a pack of five, I would just dedicate each end to a specific colorway. So for example, um, I would have like one end be for red and one red be for orange. And I would just use this for all of my red colors and this side for all of my orange and so and so. And what I see a lot of people do is they print little labels and then they wrap it around the dowel here. So they say like um, red, orange, and then the next one could be yellow, green, and so on and so forth. So um, I hope that answers your question, Diane. So um, back to the styluses, as you can see, um, if you don't dot, if you don't dab back into your paint after each dot, then your dots won't be consistent. So I just recommend doing that for consistency. Um, and you can just wipe your dowels off. I wipe them off on a paper towel, I'm not dowels, stylus off on a paper towel or a damp a cloth um, in between to switch colors. Um, the same goes with the Dilutions paint. Um, great for dotting um, because of how fluid it is. You can use the Dina paint, which is, you'll see once I squirt it out just for comparison. Um, how how thicker that paint is you can see how I don't know if you can tell but it it instead of like starting to flat out it actually holds its shape when you squeeze it out there um so but you can do the same dotting with that paint so same dot action it works just as well um so many choices to use with the stylus um i'll show you the oh and i'll show you the pencils too so um the pencil eraser um you can kind of get these big these big dots there they're you know about a quarter inch maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch um and again dipping in between each time and pressing down um the distress paint is really nice because it it flattens out really well um, because of its viscosity. Um, Dina paint, because how thick that is, it um, doesn't smooth out as much. It kind of still shows its its um, peaks a little bit there. Um, the Distress paint works very well for the eraser. Okay, and then I'll show you the dowel. So this is the mini ink, the detail blending tool. Um, again, dipping into that paint and pressing down. So I like the, um, this is a little bit bigger than the eraser. Um, you know, just play around and try different products 
and see what works the best for you. Um, but you can achieve some really fun looks this with all of these methods. Okay, and so there you go. So so just some fun dot ideas for dot art. Um, and then I'll show you the sickles. Oh, and then the one thing I do really like about um, the Dina paint is that it has the tip, so you can go right from the bottle. So I'll just show you a couple of those. So this is going to maintain its peaks, so you will get a little bit more dimension. So just keep in mind that in mind. Um, it will flatten out a little bit as it dries, um, but you can go right to the surface and use the Dina paint. I kind of like that option. I like it because the dot is a little bit bigger than the biggest stylus we have, but smaller than the eraser and the detail blending tool. So it's kind of that in-between size. All right, and then the next thing, liquid pearls. So liquid pearls, again, you can just go straight from the bottle here um, like this. You can also squeeze some on your craft sheet and liquid pearls is just a pearlescent paint. So it's not a glue or anything like that. It's a paint, it's a pearl paint. So it will act um, like any other paint. You can paint with perfect pearls. A lot of people don't know that, um, but you know what, I forgot to get water. So I'm gonna just pour my drinking water into my little water cup here. But um, you can you can grab Perfect Pearls on a brush, and this has nothing to do with dotting, but I just feel inclined to share this, um, and just paint with it like a normal paint. So you can see here, it waters out and paints like a regular paint. So a lot of people just think liquid pearls are for dotting, um, but they're not, they're beautiful pearl paints. So that's just another little tip about liquid pearls. Oh, Jen, you love your liquid pearls? Me too, I, they're a favorite. So again, um, Perfect Pearls, I'm sorry, Liquid Pearls, the stylus. Um, this is what Wendy wanted this stylus specifically for, is making these perfect flat dots on your cards and other projects. And so you can see here, um, you can get the perfect size dot every time. Let's get that under the camera. There you go. So liquid pearls, great with the stylus, great direct from the bottle. Um, if you use the stylus with the liquid pearls, you're less likely to get what I call the Hershey kiss effect, which is that like little point at the top. So the stylus is great for creating nice flat dots, uh, especially with that, the liquid pearls. And part of the reason for that that forming that top is the viscosity because it is a thicker paint just like Dina's. Um, so they do kind of hold their shape a lot more than say the Distress paint and the Dilutions paint. So um, just things to consider depending on what kind of um, what kind of look you're looking for. So then we're just going to hop over to the stickles here. And again, the stickles can go, I'm going to just flip my paper. The stickles could go direct to surface as well. I really like doing this. Um, I just find it easy to do. Um, you can dip your you can dip your stylus right into there, um, but I found that I like doing the stickles direct to the paper better than using the stylus. You can do it, but I feel like it doesn't, you can see I'm kind of struggling to really sh get a good look. It just, you could see it better when you go direct to paper. That is just my finding. So um, just options. And then of course the fine tip applicator, and I will show you how to change these out. Um, they're super easy, but you can get really um, tiny dots with this applicator. Let me just get it going and always always start off on a piece of scrap paper or your um craft sheet but here you go little tiny dots with the fine tip applicator 
Um, let me hold that up for you guys to see. There you go. And these are really easy to put on and off. What I'll do is I will grab a fresh bottle and this works for perfect pearls or stickles. So I'll just, I'm sorry, I keep saying perfect pearls, liquid pearls or stickles. So they both come with this plastic nib there. And what you do is you just grab um, a plier or anything like that. Um, I have these craft pliers, jewelry, jewelry, jewelry pliers. And you see, I just, it comes right off. And you can set this aside. Um, because if you want to just interchange them, you would just pop that back in. So these just go right, pop right back into your bottle. So I just very gently, you don't want to push, pull, you don't want to squeeze too hard because you don't want to mess this nib up, but you can pull these on and off. And then you just get your fine tip applicator here and you just replace this entire piece. So keep your cap and keep your plastic nib aside in case you want to take this off um which i like to use them both ways so i like to keep mine um and then this unscrews here and let's get it flowing there we go so give it a good squeeze to get it flowing and then you can do your really tiny dots this is also great for like drawing lines. You can see I can get like a really thin line with it. Um, so fine tip applicator, great for those really, really tiny dots. And then it has this needle. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a needle right there. And that just sits into this nib so that it doesn't clog. And you can give that a bang to get the product out of the the nib there so that way it sits more to the bottom but those are some basic tools and different mediums that we have for dot making and now we're going to go ahead and make something <laughs> um yes the applicator does make it a lot more manageable so oh hey lisa i'm glad you got uh to join us it's nice out today it looks really i haven't been out yet but i heard it's it seems like it's really nice out I think we're we're finally getting some nicer weather in New Jersey. It's been quite the um, ro roller coaster of of um, weather here. Okay, so let me move some of this out of the way, and I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our card. I was kind of most excited about that because you know we have always seen dot art on rocks especially i think is the most popular thing i've seen um and little coasters and things like that but i haven't seen too much in card making and just thought it would be really fun so i am going to get a piece of card adhesive i'm sorry cardstock oh lord not card adhesive um and i'm gonna move my make art station into the playing field here let me slide everything over. All right. Sorry, guys. There we go. All right. So I'm going to work on the make art station with this because I'm going to be using a stencil. And this is a great um, board for stenciling. All right. And I am using a brand new product. It is the um, Simon Hurley Creates Stencil and Mask Set. It is the Scene Builder. It just came out last week, I think was his launch. Um, and if you haven't, if you're not familiar with his maker stencils, definitely check them out because they're really cool layering stencils and you can get really neat, um, neat effects with them. And this one you can make a scene and you can see on the back, it kind of gives you some ideas but you can layer them together to make like a mountain scene and like a star and nighttime scene. There's little birds here. There's um, a cloud and a sun and it's all everything you need right here. And I'm going to use the little mountains and the sun today. Let me take it out so you can kind of see how it comes in the package because I took mine apart. So, um, So 
it comes like this and so you get the mask and the the mask and this stencil and it comes like this so the sun against mask and stencil and so you have the grass down here you can make a little grass scene you have some clouds two clouds a moon the little birds some stars this is for making clouds you can layer this and make a cloud scene um, lots of cool ideas if you're not familiar with the Simon Hurley create line definitely check it out um, and check this stencil out because um, Simon's samples that he made with this I was like <laughs> I need to have it, I need it. <laughs> so um, we're gonna be using some pieces of those today. And so I'm gonna start with this little hill here and I'm gonna keep this really simple because you know me, I like simple and doable. And I'm going to place this down like this, just line it up with my bottom. And then I am going to secure my area with magnets. When you use your magnets on the station, just make sure that you're securing both your cardstock and your stencil. That is key. You don't want to just secure one. And I'm going to use some distress markers. You could use anything you like to trace um, the images. That way you're not having to erase pencil lines or anything like that. It just becomes part of your design. So I am going to go in with Twisted Citron. And I just trace this hill here. Um, so this is a very complicated project. <laughs> uh, so yep, we're just gonna trace along that hill. And then what I'm gonna do is remove that and flip it. And then I'm going to make kind of like a mountain that's coming up behind the, behind the first one. And so for that, I'm going to use Lucky Clover and I, now for this, I'm just tracing this big mountain, this big hill. Okay, so you can get a lot more complicated with this. You could um, ink this first for sure. I was thinking maybe I would do that, but I changed my mind. <laughs> but you could certainly go in and use this part of the stencil. For example, you could um, put this back down here um, and not not trace it with the marker and and go ahead and just ink these areas and then do the dots on top that's certainly an option i just wanted to keep it simple i'm just going with white background and tracing um using those masks to trace so i have my mountains in place and then we're going to do our sun and i'm going to put the sun kind of up here off to the side and again, you can use your station to hold everything down. And then you're just going to trace. And this is carved pumpkin. Um, so while I'm using my distress markers here, I don't know if you all are aware, but next week on the 20th, we will be revealing the next distress color. So that is very exciting. If you go to our website, um, and click new products and off to the left there is a link to more more distress to love I think it's called and you can put your email in to be notified when the color is available goes live on our site um, so that is really super fun okay yes it is a super versatile um, stencil oh thanks for sharing Lisa Okay, so now that I have that traced, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, we move that aside, and now we get to dotting. And you're like, oh my gosh, is it gonna take forever for her to make the dots? And I will tell you, I was presently su pleasantly surprised at how quickly the dotting went, went by because it's very relaxing, and you, again, don't have to think too hard about it and it goes by really fast. So I will show you on this sample here, I used Dina paints and Perfect Pearls and Stickles. And on this sample here, which is still drying, I used Dilutions paints with some of the other tools. I kind of like mixed it up. So I think, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna use now, but <laughs> I'm gonna do something similar though and 
let's get some paints going. So I think for speed, I'm going to use, no, you know what? I'm gonna do the big dots again. So I'm gonna go in with, um, this is Sour Apple Teeny Dilutions paint. I'm gonna use that on the bottom hill and I'm gonna use my eraser because I like that size dot. And I'm gonna turn my page so you can make sure you see it. And oh, I just got a smudge. So dotting each time, dipping back into the paint. And if you don't get a full area coverage, that's okay, just go back over it. And I'm just gonna cover up my, my smudges and just adding these look very like cartoonish they reminded me of like mario um the mushrooms and mario <laughs> so just and i don't i just do a couple of big dots and then i fill in um with little dots and i did one color at a time so next i would go in with my um liquid pearls or stickles so i'll do liquid pearls next I think and again always just giving it a start off to the side and um, now I'm just gonna add some smaller dots all around my big dots and we're gonna go in with a third color so you don't have to go too close together but I do find that this technique works the best when you have a lot of dots. It just looks nice. It looks like that dotty mosaic look. So just keeping in mind that I am going to be um, adding a third color. There's the next layer. So you can see how quickly that actually went. Um, and <laughs> almost put it right in my paint. Uh, are, you, are we sure it's not Friday? <laughs> it feels like it needs to be. Okay, and then I am going to go with the third color and I'm going to use some palm leaf stickles and this time I will use it with the fine tip applicator so I can get now even a smaller size dot and that is going to go and again get it started off to the side. Um, you got to give it like a good squeeze initially and then once you get that first squeeze just to get the product up there you don't have to squeeze as hard so you'll see me like to get it started I sometimes have to use both hands um, but then once you get it flowing you're good to go and so here we are just adding our little dots in between and this will give it a fun glitter touch and you can see um, it doesn't really take all that long and it's super relaxing so there you have the bottom layer already done what was that like a couple minutes it's funny you said they look like Mario World Mushrooms because there is a Mario and Luigi ad on the right side of my screen right Is It's probably because I said it. <laughs> Big Brother's listening. <laughs> oh, something else you need to buy, Liquid Pearls and Stickles. Well, Liquid Pearls and Stickles have been in the Ranger line for a very long time and they were a great, um, a great investment to your craft extension, your craft line there. Um, okay, and then behind me, I'm actually going to do smaller dots on the um, other mountain. I'm going to use Dina Wakely Peacock. I kind of want this like to have like a teal color behind, kind of look like it's, you know, in the distance a little bit more. And I'm not going to use the largest size dot. I'm going to just go right from the bottle here. I'm going to try and cover up this green. <laughs> and again add those dots on the back mountain um, that looks pretty good so there you have the second layer and then we'll go in i'm going to use perfect pearls again this is do i want to do perfect pearls or oh, 
let's see. I used so many things. Um, I just kept trying a whole bunch of different um, paints and ideas. So I'm gonna actually switch it up a little and I'm gonna go with Blue Lagoon and I'm going to do some dots with that um, and the stylus. And I could have continued working on my make art station and just um, held this down, but I want to really be able to move my paper around so that I'm not sticking my left hand, my clumsy left handedness into my paint. So we're just going to keep dotting. So you can see the stylus is definitely a little bit more work um, than obviously squeezing directly out of the bottle. But when you use the stylus, you do get those nice flat dots. So it really depends, I just kind of messed that one up. It really depends on the look you're going for. And I like mixing it up. I think it's fun to have a mixture. Okay. So there was my second layer, and then where is my towel? <laughs> Love the colors. All my Perfect Pearls are too gooey to make nice dots, even the newest bottles. Really? Um, liquid Pearls, I'm assuming you still mean. Um, They shouldn't be. I, these are pretty old. Some of these colors we don't even have anymore. They're, I've had them in my house for a long time. Um, and I didn't have a trouble with them. But definitely, you could always email customer service if there's a problem. Or shoot me a message right here on, in, on Facebook and I'm happy to take a look. Okay, so now I'm just filling in with um, Perfect Pearls in a similar color. And you can mix up different colors. You could do stickles here instead, um, but just adding some little dots with Perfect Pearls. Oh my gosh, Liquid Pearls. I keep saying Perfect Pearls too. There we go. Oh, thanks Colleen for jumping in on that one. <laughs> Colleen is our national sales manager. She she's checking out the live. Some of your older ones are gooey. You know, paint thickens over time. And like I said, liquid pearls is a paint. So if you've had them for a really long time, it could be just a shelf life issue. But any of the newer ones, um, you shouldn't really, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, oh, you don't remember what colors because you toss them. Yeah, it, you know, like, like most things and especially paint, um, paint does have a shelf life. Okay, now I'm going to work on my sun here and I'm going to use strawberry daiquiri on the sun and I'm going to go in with, um, my dowel this time and I'm gonna make a nice um, center nice big center right center and then I'm gonna work around that so I'm going to get my grapefruit stickles as well as my sunburst stickles and I'm gonna do the strawberry daiquiri and the two stickles and I'm just gonna decorate my sun that way. And actually, I'm gonna go in with my stylus first. And I'm just adding dots all around my sun, however you feel like it. Again, dipping in between each, let me scooch up so you guys can see, 
dipping in in between each dot. That's super important. My family is preparing to go outside for a while, so if there is some background noise, I'm going to apologize in advance. But my two-year-old just woke up from his nap and my husband's taking them out. <laughs> I always get nervous doing these lives from home. My kids deserve a medal of honor for, for um, being as polite as they, they've been on these couple weeks. Yes, this color is super bright. It's a lot of fun. Okay, now I'm gonna just start adding in some other colors. I'll probably go back to that color. All right, so I'll start on the craft sheet, and I'm going to go every other with the yellow. Just dotting the top, and this we're just going right from the bottle. Okay, approximately how long does it take to dry? Um, I <laughs> I would let it sit overnight, to be honest. Um, it takes a few hours to dry, but I it probably would take less time than overnight. But to be on the safe side, because I don't want you to like go through all this work and then mess it up, you're best to just like let it set overnight. Oh, look, I didn't do every, every other one. I have to fix that. I gotta, I gotta add some more yellow dots. So yeah, I don't want you to go through all this hard work and then stick your finger in it. Cause been there. <laughs> so I would kind of let it sit overnight or at least like six, six hours or so. You really want to give it some good drying time, especially those Dina Wakely dots. That paint's like pretty thick and because we're going right from the bottle there, um, better safe than sorry. Um, put it somewhere that you can't reach. Yes, yep, mm-hmm. So I did, I'll show you guys in a second, but I did a sample yesterday and then I really liked how it turned out, but I didn't, I wanted to move the placement of the sun. So I moved, I did another sample this morning and then I went to put the sentiment on thinking it was dry and it wasn't and I kind of messed it up. But I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna cover it with the sentiment. So okay, just working on the sun here, adding sickles and liquid pearls. Um, again, no rhyme or reason, just having fun with it. Um, adding dot, dots as I go, making a pattern, um, just, just having a ball. Um, would this work on a tin can for outdoors? I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, you may have to seal because some of our paints, obviously paints are water-based and um, you may want to, if it's going to be sitting outside, I would try and um, seal it with some sort of sealer, protective sealer. Um, I think a lot of people who do rock painting um, seal as well, seal their rocks. So with like a probably like a UV spray or like a poly polyurethane or I should have looked up that in advance but I will do some research and put it in the comments um you know I thought about that is oh how do people seal them but um I completely forgot to research it but I would recommend sealing it for sure if you're putting it outside 
All right, so I'm just adding a couple more dots there. I'm gonna go in with some yellow here. I hope that answered your question and not confused you. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave that as is. So there's our sun. Super fun, let me hold this up for you guys. And now I'm just gonna do a quick, I'm gonna add the background really quickly. So I'm gonna just show you how like fast that can go. Um, I'm gonna start with some orange. So we're gonna go with tangerine. This is Di um, Dina paint and go right from the bottle. And what I'm gonna do is wipe that up so I don't mess my card up. Varnish, yes, that's what I meant, a varnish. A spray varnish, you can buy it like, I'm sure, um, like Krylon or like a Home Depot in like, you know, a spray bottle spray can. I used to paint bird houses when I was younger and give them for gifts. And that was one, um, I would just buy a spray, acrylic paint spray, uh, spray varnish and just spray with that. All right, and now some lemon. The next color, so we're just doing like a gradient, thinking about a sunrise here, kind of setting behind these mountains. I always start with the big dots first. Whatever my biggest dot is, I do that first. Okay, and then blue, so we're gonna do... switch it up a little all right we're gonna go turquoise on this one I didn't haven't done turquoise but we'll pretend that this is like a nice really sunny day maybe maybe the sun's been out for a while already my daughter <laughs> is standing at the window you can see in to my office base from the backyard. <laughs> she is trying to feed the wild rabbits. We have rabbits that live under our shed. And so yesterday she asked me for um, carrots and lettuce to bring out to them. And she was sad when they didn't um, eat that. So I wonder if they ate it. Um, Great idea for making something for outside, like a flower pot. Yes, um, flower pots, a stepping stone would be great. Um, rocks, obviously, that's a huge thing. Um, yeah, lots of, tons of ideas. So just have fun with it and, um, and, and go with it. I think it's just, just a blast. I had a lot of fun making these. Okay, I'm going to go in with some stickles here now the yellow you can switch out your colors you can do there's so many color options so just have fun with them and again you can do some ink blending down first if you wanted to just dot on top of the ink blending and have the ink blending kind of be the background too um i thought about just not doing the background with dots um and just having like the mountains and the sun be the dots but I'm a little bit extra sometimes. <laughs> and I was like, nope, gonna do the whole thing. I wanna get another color of stickles, actually. This is, oh, that's the same. Apparently I like grapefruit stickles a lot. Maybe this is the only orange I have. All right, grapefruit it is. Do I have a liquid pearl? Actually, we're gonna do outrageous. Liquid Pearls, Outrageous. These are some of those electric colors we came out with last year. So that'll just brighten up that tangerine. 
So, and I like mixing between the paints and between the stickles and liquid pearls. It just gives it a whole other dimension. All right, and then the last part is the top, the blue, and let's go um, with, I think we'll do some, this is Frozen. This was like a limited edition color that we did a while back. Um, but we have, we have tons of colors and stickles and liquid pearls. Then I'm going to put this aside to dry and finish it tomorrow. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Somehow you miss what I traced the mountain look, looks like a color and then the bottom is lighter. Yes, I used distress markers. So that was, I didn't know if you saw the stencil, but um, we used the Simon Hurley Scene Builder Stencil, and then we just traced the masks with some distress markers. You could use any kind of color pens. You could use dilutions. Paint pens would work great. Um, Letterit fine liners would be great. Um, really anything. You could use a pencil too, um, but I liked using the colored marker um, and just keeping the outline there. So there's my background. Super fun. I'm going to put that up there to dry. And then what I did here, I'll bring down my sample from yesterday. So you can see I had my sun lower and then when I went to try out the sentiment on top, um, I wanted to move my sun up. I just, I don't know, I just wanted to try something different. So this is one that I did this morning and you can see I stuck my sentiment down here and I kind of flattened some of my things. So this is actually mostly dry. The stickles are dry. Um, the liquid pearls are dry. What is not fully dry are the Dina paints, the bigger ones, and they're still a little soft. So if you press something on them, they probably would flatten a little bit. Um, but that was my sample from this morning. And I'm going to just throw this card together really quick. And then we're going to move on to something else. Um, the, the stencil is the Scene Maker stencil from Simon Hurley. It just came out. Oh, hey David, you are here this week. Um, adding dot embellishments to projects. Yes, that is, that it is a trend. I've been seeing a lot more, um, dot embellishments happening. Okay, you guys. So last week I told you I was getting a paper trimmer in my order well guess what my paper trimmer did not come so i have to still cut cut down my cardstock with my exacto knife and ruler so if you've been if you've been tuning in weekly we've been we talked about that last week i'm just gonna i'm now that this is dry a little more i'm just off to the side here and i apologize trimming down my background so i can mount it to some black because i just think that finishes it off nicely um, you don't have to do that. You can certainly trim your paper down before you start. Um, but I just trimmed a quarter inch off my background from my background from this morning that is now dry. And then I'm going to take some black cardstock. Um, which I moved. There we go. Okay, some black cardstock, and I'm just going to assemble my card really quickly before we move on to a different project. Oh, I'm glad you like the cards. <clears throat> Idea for this would look so nice. Speaking of art journals, on like an art journal cover, um, really any of these projects can be translated to whatever medium you prefer right so if you're an art journaler and not a card maker oh, my, my. my multimedia isn't coming out right now 
Oh, there it is. Just, just trying to get my glue out here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, no trimmer. I think I might order one um, from Amazon maybe. Actually, I think I might have one at my mom's house still. So before I was married, um, I lived at home with my mom and I was in, really into scrapbooking. That was like really back in the scrapbooking heydays. And I worked for a scrapbooking company. Um, and so I was really into scrapbooking and I have, um, I believe I have like a little, a little paper trimmer there. The one I had here was just really big and old and you had to replace the blades and just, it was taking up a lot of space and I ended up tossing it. Okay, I need a little more glue on that, but I'll worry about that later. Okay, and then I'm gonna just, I already pre-stamped my sentiment and cut it out. So just to save some time, but I will show you. This is from the Simon Hurley. These two products go really well together, the Scene Maker and the Stamp Set. This is called Road Trip, it's brand new. And look how cute this is, you guys. Um, like, like oh, how adorable, I love this stamp set. But I'm just using this Let the Adventure Begin sentiment. I just stamped it in Jet Black Archival and cut it out. And I'm just going to foam mount it onto my card here. So let me get some foam tape. Oops, as usual, knock something over. <laughs> yeah, I just love finishing it off on the black. It just gives it a nice little border. And then of course your black sentiment um, is stamped in black. So like it just really pops against like that really busy background. And you know, this is a card where like I didn't really wanna put characters or anything on it because it just has, um, you know, the background is really the like focal point. So just getting a piece of white foam and I will, see this is where I messed it up. You can see the back. I was like, that is still wet, Kelly. Thank you. And I kept telling myself, don't touch the card. Don't touch the card. And then I'm like, oh great. Let me put my sentiment on so I can have that as a finished symbol. But then I thought, well, it'd be nice if I assembled this one during the video since the other one would be definitely too wet to do. All right, pick off the um, backing. And then I'm going to cover up the thing that I smushed right there. And there you have it. So finished card um you could you would could mount this to a folded a folded card after this um whatever you wanted to do but i love that okay next and i'm just going to show you these because i just want to give you ideas and we're not because we won't, definitely won't have time to make them and i didn't know i just thought i'd play around because i'm going to show you guys a little rock painting next so i did this guy it was really fun to do. So I'm gonna show you that little quick little rock painting. Um, but I wanted to show you this stencil. So this is not a Ranger product. I ordered this on Amazon and it's a mandala dotting stencil set. It comes in three pieces. So um, you can, it has small, medium and large stencils in it. I'll just show you guys. So originally when I was thinking about doing this video, I was gonna do some mandalas and I thought this would be a great thing to have. Um, it has some ideas in the back. So if you wanted to do um, some mandala work, um, this is just a stencil that I got on Amazon and I can link to it in the comments. Um, and so I thought, okay, what can I make mandalas on to, to try? So I pulled, um, some, these are the Tim Holtz alcohol ink boards. So this, these were somewhat of a success and somewhat of a not success. So um, I kind of, let me just 
get out one of the stencils. So I just laid this stencil over this and then I just traced it with a pencil. And then I used that as a guide to make my mandala. But you could see, this is Dilutions paint here. It kind of like wicked out a little bit. So it weren't, wasn't like perfect dots. I found that dots that you make right from the bottle, like the Dina and the Stickles and Liquid Pearls worked better. Because this is a slick non-porous surface for alcohol ink, this is the hardcore art panel for alcohol ink, the um, lighter viscosity paints, like the Dilutions wicked out and they didn't make like perfect circles. Um, but this is one I tried first with um, doing the stylus and using Dina paints and liquid pearls and it did turn out much better. And there are some pencil marks and I did go in with any, you can go in with like a white eraser and erase around or you can paint, paint over it. I've seen people do that. So I just wanted to give you some ideas of what paint I used. Um, so this was Dilutions paint here, the bigger dots, and then with stickles and liquid pearls. Um, this I used Dina paints right from the bottle. I used Dilutions paint with a stylus, um, small dots, that worked okay, um, as well as stickles and liquid pearl dots right from the bottle, and that worked okay as well. Um, but when I did the Dilutions paint on this one, you can see, let me hold it closer, it kind of like wicked out a little bit. So just play around, um, but I thought that these would be fun. You could certainly do this and then cover it with resin and make coasters out of these. Um, and for, yeah, for the card, Colleen, thank you. Yep, Dina paint, Dilutions paint, Liquid Pearls, and Stickles. Yep, so I just wanted to give you some options and you could also use this on paper so you can trace this on your paper and just like I made the card, do the same dot system. So I just wanted to mention this as an option. Um, I thought originally my project was going to be a, a mandala card, but then I got the idea to do the um, scene design and I just <laughs> I thought that was so much, <laughs> not more fun, but to me, I'm more like, this is more my style than like exact like mandala precision. So I just decided to go with something that spoke more true to, to me personally. So um, but I did want to mention that these kind of stencils are available and you can play around with different surfaces and paint and, and make like different coaster designs. So next I'm going to talk about just some rock painting because I still had a lot of fun with that. And I happen to have this perfect, perfect rock painting rock. And this, you want to try and find a, a flat rock. Um, now I think is a good time to, you know, kind of scour your neighborhood and, and see um, what you have. I took this from my front lawn. I'm always yelling at my kids to stop playing with our landscaping, but here I am pulling our landscaping apart. But you want to try and find a, a flat rock. This was a rock um, from my friend's house. We actually painted, so this is a good example of why you should seal your rocks. Believe it or not, this was a painted rock once. Um, my kids were painting with their friends and we just used ch cheap, like kid te tempera paint and it was painted, <laughs> but then it was outside and within like one or two rainstorms <laughs> that took care of that. So that's why you want to seal your rocks or things that you're going to put outside. But I thought I would, um, kind of do a rainbow scene. Obviously rainbows are the, um, kind of... I don't know, are they the, the logo symbol of the times? So this is such a great rock. Um, I I wish I had more, more like these. Um, but yeah, so let's get going um, on the rock painting because I think that will be super fun. And I'm going to get a paintbrush. So I'm going to do it a little bit different than what I did for this one, I think, um, which I probably should have rehearsed that, but um, I'm going to get some blue paint going and I'm using, um, again, I'm going to use a combination of Dilutions paints and Dina Weekly paints here. Um, and I'm just going to think about, oh, you know what I should have done first? Sorry, guys. I forgot a step. <laughs> I'm gonna erase. I'm gonna erase this. <laughs> Wipe that off. Um, I actually 
I gessoed my rock first yesterday. This rock here, I gessoed first. Um, and so I think I'm gonna do that so that my colors pop a little bit better. Um, let me get my white gesso. Okay, I forgot I did that yesterday. So let's just do a little white gesso here. This is just so that your colors will pop on your um, rock, okay? So, white gesso. These dry really quick, and listen, you don't need a thick layer. And this rock I painted, obviously, see, was like a neutral color. I actually, I painted it black first, and then put the colors on top. But I think this will do me some good. All right, so let's let that dry a second. It looks like charcoal. Yeah, it does look like charcoal. My friend had some really good rocks by, by her house. <laughs> really good rock painting rocks. Okay, so yeah, prepping it with gesso. So um, I'm gonna get that to dry. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna start um, putting some of my co other colors out that I wanna use. And for this, I like to use the stylus um, because it is a smaller area and you're gonna just get um, more even dots. So I'm gonna just start putting out some colors. I'm gonna do a little bit of that strawberry daiquiri. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of, um, what else did I use yesterday? Um, Fiery Sunset. These are all Dilutions colors. They're newer. Um, we'll do some, I swear I used this, but it's not opened, so I must have not. <clears throat> do a little pink flamingo. I use some Balmy Night all dilutions colors that I'm pouring out right now and green I need a lime lime green I thought I kept out all of the colors I left I used but apparently I didn't oh I think this is what that is um lemon zest and I'll do Just putting out a little, little array of assortment of colors here that I'm going to use. And last but not least, a little bit of white. All right, so I'm gonna use Dilutions paints mostly. The white is Dina Wakely. Um, Dye has a white too. It's called white linen. I just don't happen to have that here. Um, so yep, fiery sunset, um, blue Hawaiian. Um, this is blue lagoon. I have some sour apple teeny, some lemon drop. Um, I also have some strawberry daiquiri and those bottles are upside down, but that's okay. I don't think you can see them. <laughs> I'll move them into the picture a little bit. All right, so, all right, this is this is dry enough. So I'm just gonna paint a little blue water here. We're gonna just make do with what we have available. All right, and then just deciding where my water is gonna be and where my rainbow is gonna go and kind of figuring it out from there. All right, and then I am gonna do, actually I think I am gonna do black 
um, Underneath My Rainbow. So let me get Distress Paint for that. And if you're wondering like why am I using like distress paint for certain some colors and Diane for some dilutions for some colors and Dina's paints for some colors it just because that's what I have at home um, I have kind of like a assortment of their color palettes that's all so I'm just making a rainbow shape up to my waterline you can kind of decide how wide you want it to be. I'm not gonna worry too much about the edges because the edges I'm going to dot with white to kind of clean up at the end. You can use Diane's uh, Dilutions paint pens too. Um, so I think that's good. I'm gonna leave this um, area white actually. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm not completely in the screen, I apologize. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'll move both rocks over. My apologies. Here we go. So this is the rock I did yesterday. So I'll just keep that. Can you guys see that? Yeah, all right, perfect. Sorry about that, back in the picture, all good. All right, I want to darken that blue actually. Hopefully that's where I'm going to go in with a different, another coat. Um, another coat of blue down here. And if that doesn't do me how I want it, I might go in with a Dina paint. Dina paint is a lot thicker. And don't forget, we're dotting on top of this, so this is just a little background. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. I think I'm gonna leave it at that um, because I'm gonna dot on top, and I don't wanna. That's too much. All right, so dotting. Um, I'm going to use the stylus. 4.15. I like to end by like 4.30. Do you think I can do it? <laughs> it's a long one. Thank you guys for sticking with me. <laughs> um, if you're new to the feed, um, just so you guys know, um, please share the video because I do do giveaways. Um, and I do give away two prize packs. So share and comment that you shared it. Replays will be available both on the Ranger site and the um, Ranger site on our YouTube and right here on Facebook. And if you're new, double tap the screen um, and you should be able to click on get notified when we're live. So anytime we go live, you can get a um, notification that Ranger is live. Um, I'm using the stylus. I'm using the bigger section of the stylus. Again, dipping every time. This is balmy night. It's kind of that gray blue color. Really pretty. Um, and again, dotting, dipping back into my paint between each dot. All right, next 
we are going to go in with Blue Lagoon and I'm going to add that in between. You want your dots fairly close together because you really want to cover that area. So, this is super relaxing. Like I really wish, like you could just sit with like a glass of wine, <laughs> maybe your favorite Netflix series playing and just dot away and just relax and enjoy the, the dotting. So next week, I actually don't have an idea in mind. I usually, I've had the last few weeks like pre-planned, but I've blown through six or seven weeks now of videos. So I'm not really sure what next week's video will be, you guys. It's going to be a video surprise. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna actually add some orange and yellow down here, like as though like the sun was kind of peeking through. Can you do a video with air dry clay? So we don't sell air dry clay, um, but we do have quick cure clay, um, which cures with just the use of a heat tool, a Ranger heat tool. Have you guys seen that product? I don't have any at home with me, but if you if there's an interest, and since I, it seems though we're gonna be home for a while. <laughs> Let me know and I can make an effort to um, do something with that. I can get some. It may not be, probably won't be for like another like two weeks or so until I can get an order. But if you guys would like to see that, I'd be open. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop there on the water part. Oh, thanks, Jen. Okay, next we're going to start on the rainbow. I'm going to turn this upside down. So I'm going to start with my darkest color here, which is actually lied. I'm going to start with this color here, which is the um, pink flamingo. Very therapeutic, someone said, and yes, I tend to agree, and very addicting. And when you're done here, you can go ahead and Google dot art or dot painting, rock painting, and have your mind blown. <laughs> enjoy this. I really had fun with the card. I was pleasantly surprised by how that turned out. It's always good to be, to surprise yourself. And we're just adding our dots. 
I'm going to do two layers of the pink. Also, the tapping noise <laughs> is very soothing, too. So it's not even just the um, process itself. It's like the noise that the stylus against the table makes and then onto the rock. I wonder why people love this. Oh, you did mean to quick your clay. Sure, I will I will try and um, get some. Have you guys used it? Anybody watching? Uh, the clay is the clay is amazing. Um, there are many sculpture artists using it um, for fine art, sculpture, jewelry. And the cool thing about it is that you don't need to kiln fire it. It does. It literally cures instantly with just our craft tool. And we can hear you, Savvy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my Twitter. <laughs> She's talking to, through the window. She thinks that she can't be he you can't she can't be heard. She can't be heard. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then we're gonna go in here. This is Fiery Sunset. It's kind of a pretty orangey color. Orangey red. I like the mixture of the bright colors, like the electric colors. Diane calls them her cocktail range um, and her kind of more muted colors. And you can see on the rock surface how these dots just really are so pretty. They just really kind of flatten out. Um, they're just very, let me hold this up so you guys can see the progress. Really cool. All right. And then let's see what color we're going to do next. And then what I do is I switch nibs on my, um, stylus. So I go for a smaller size as I kind of get closer to the middle. Um, It gives it a more realistic look. I don't know if realistic is the word, but it looks cool. <laughs> Just to go with a smaller nib, um, is it a nib? A smaller tip. And the great thing about our stylus set is that it comes with, it's a two pack, so you get four different sizes. I'm getting there guys. We're just dotting away here. <laughs> yes, you would definitely want to seal this when you're done. So we were just talking about that a little bit earlier. Um, you would use just like a spray varnish, acrylic spray varnish, anything like that, especially if you're gonna put it outside. You want to um, make sure that you're sealing it. Since these dots are so small, I can kind of get two dots in, out of one dip. Okay, coming to an end here, coming to the end. We're gonna go with, I wanna make sure I have enough room. And we'll go with green next. Yeah, so you definitely wanna seal this when you're done, especially if anything that you're gonna put outside um, obviously like acrylic paints are water-based, so if they get hit with rain, um, things like that, they're not permanent, so. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to get me some sealers so I can put these in my garden. Can you seal the rock with an acrylic medium or varnish if you do not want a white background? I'm sure you can. I've seen them with just like a spray fixative, um, like a Krylon spray fixative, like a clear varnish is it would be completely fine. All right, I'm gonna do blue last color. And then I'm just gonna do white in the middle. I have a little space there, so I might go back and fill that in. Um, just gonna fill that in with some more. And you can see I put out way more paint than I actually ended up needing. So a little bit goes a long way there. And then we'll go with some white paint and we're gonna do some bigger dots in the white paint. And don't forget that this is the Dina paint, so it sits a little bit differently. And I think I'm gonna do some different sizes. So I should start spreading them out a little bit. And yes, you can use black gesso. I use black gesso on, actually I use black paint on this, but you could certainly use black gesso. So you can see this white, this rock was like a tan rock. So I just painted the whole thing black to start. Okay, and now I'm just gonna do the ed edge. Doing the edge really just kind of finishes it off for me. Um, I'm gonna do a smaller tip. And I'm just gonna do it in the white. So you're just gonna go, go a little closer together here, really close together on the dots. Let me move this up a little. Sorry guys. And I'm just following this around. Cute, right? You can do anything. Um, you can translate this to a card design. You can translate this to a journal cover. <laughs> My daughter's reminding me, we're actually going to look at a house today. Um, don't worry, we're taking the proper precautions um and she's like we have to leave soon <laughs> you're watching as you're looking for rocks yes go on a rock hunt and again please tag me tag ranger in any art so we can see it all right almost there guys i appreciate you hanging with me this afternoon this was a long one but it was fun. Just adding my finishing dots to this edging. I think it makes a big difference in just finishing it off. My daughter would do this for probably 10 minutes. So it would be 10 minutes of, but she would paint, she would paint the rocks. My son, 
would be done in about one minute and he would just spread paint all over. Did I put my finger there? Yes, I did. Let's see if I can clean that up. All right, not too bad. That's what you don't wanna do. It probably would be in your best interest to let the inside dry and then dot the outside. But, all right, you guys, here's the finished rock. Super fun. I really like how that came out. And here's my one from yesterday. And then, of course, our card. If you guys are tuning in late, um, you can always catch the replay. Let's move this up. You can always catch the replay on um, our Facebook page or on YouTube as well. Let me go ahead and flip the camera around. Um, this is nothing, Kelly. Have you watched Tim Holtz lives? Yes, I do watch all of his lives. So say hi to me. <laughs> I am there every Saturday. Um, but <laughs> thank you guys so much. Let me go ahead and flip the camera back around. Uh. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for another Wednesday Live. I had a blast. I hope you did too. Have fun making some dot art. Um, again, we will be back next Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Uh, for another project. I have no idea this time what it's going to be, but uh, we will have fun. Um, again, share the video. We do give away prizes. Um, turn on notifications so you know that we're live. And tune in on Friday um, on Instagram, ranger underscore inc. We will have a question and answer with Wendy Vecchi this Friday. That is also at three o'clock, but it is over on our Instagram. So ranger underscore inc. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. I had a blast. Um, share with me your creations. I'd love to see them. Have a great, have a great afternoon.